welcome to the Year 7 Parents Information Evening. I'm really sorry that we aren't able to hold this event in school, in person. It would be lovely to see everybody visiting our wonderful school. However, in the current climate, we feel it's only appropriate and safe that we are able to run this uh, event virtually for you. Uh, my name's Matt Pauling, I'm the new head teacher. I'm very pleased to be that head teacher. I'm proud of the role and opportunity to work closely with your son and your daughter um, to, and the amazing staff we have at school to really make a difference to their education and their life chances moving forward. But tonight's about sharing what happens in school um, and where we are looking to try and support your child to be the best that they can be. And in doing so, I feel it's only important for you to understand my philosophy about what a good school should be. And there are three promises that I'd like to make to you as a parent for a child in our school. Firstly, that your child will be known and they'll be valued. They'll have a sense of belonging that this is their school and pride in that. And we'll work ever so hard to ensure that we give them the confidence and the support around them to feel really at home. I believe very strongly that actually feeling like you want to be at school and you really want the very best is a start point for any education. The second is that you're going to have disruption free learning and that in every classroom you have the right to actually learn the best you can and that we will work hard to ensure that we educate those students who haven't quite understood that yet that they need to be uh, adhering to that policy because it's only right and fair that every student has the best possible chance to, to succeed in, in school. And the third is that they'll be challenged and they not just to give up their best to, on a regular basis but to be their very best that they can be. And it's important to me that we are able to um, provide that challenge in a really structured way that's supportive but has high expectations. So on everything from behaviour to uniform to attitude and, and, and work, standard of work, we will be asking that your child to really stretch themselves to be the very best version of themselves that they can be. When we talk about learning and what we are, options we offer at Chosen Hill School, we need to talk a bit about what that looks like. And so in terms of how we organise that learning and provide support for it, we have a number of different aspects to that broad education that we provide. The first is around ex that they need to experience success and be successful and the range of enrichment and, and uh, learning opportunities that students will have is, va is many and varied and we'll be encouraging them all to take, take a, 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 an active role in not just engaging but actually taking some leadership within that. There's a curriculum that's a very important part of what we, we, we put uh, in, in front of students and, and in terms of how we structure that learning, what they need to know uh, from, in order to build on prior learning and to extend their understanding to ensure they're really a genuine uh, retention and, and ability to learn moving forward. So we spend a lot of time talking uh, and looking, look, talking with staff and developing that curriculum and ensuring it's appropriate for the cohorts of students that we have coming through the school but still provides that rigour and that that sense of coherency, but also that stretch to ensure that we get the very best out of them during their time with us. Broader than that, we talk about a thing called cultural capital, and that's that understanding of the world they're in. And we do that through developing a reading culture, as well as the opportunity to go attend trips and learning outside of school, where we bring a variety of different uh, learning mentors and uh, companies to come in to work alongside our, our amazing staff here to really get the very best out of students. Sometimes we need to provide that additional support for students, so a bit to ensure that they, are, if they're having a, a bad time or, or um, not really uh, feeling comfortable, we have a, a, a strong network and support process in, in place for them to work, look after their well-being, but also to help them to get organised and feel like they are again happy to learn and ready to to, to, to take on what's off, on offer from their school. Now, the other that next aspect around that is around home learning. You know, what we do in school needs to be supported by what goes on outside of school and your support on that is really helpful. But there'll be a, a, an expectation and a programme around home learning that we'll talk to a little bit later on in this presentation. And the final bit around that is around that, that mindset. That ability to uh, recognise that not everything is going to go smoothly and that learning is sometimes quite difficult. But we are going to work with students to really understand that through our work around growth mindset and metacognition on how they learn. Having discussed how we might help structure that learning, let's talk a little bit about who might help with that. And I just wanted to introduce you very quickly to our senior team. Just flash them up on our screen here in front of us. All of those people will have an instrumental role in what they do to support your, your 
uh, son or your daughter in their learning. Other members of staff, it's worth us just picking up at this point who will have an influential part alongside the learning mentors, which Miss Moss will talk about shortly, uh, is Mr Day, Mr Matt Day, who is our uh, Senior Progress Coordinator, who works very closely around ensuring that students are making the, the appropriate progress, but also ensuring that their um, attendance and their behaviour is uh, appropriate to, to helping them learn the best they can. Another member of staff who some of you will be familiar with already is Miss Kate Soman, who is in charge of our inclusion area and who will be working with students with specific learning needs to ensure that they are able to access the curriculum fully and make a real difference to their, their understanding of learning. I really look forward to welcoming you into the school as soon as you possibly can and we're going to work really hard to find an opportunity for you to come and visit face to face and to, uh, to find out a little bit more about school itself. I'm now going to hand you over to Miss Ellie Moss, who will take a little bit more about her learning mentor team. Hello there, my name is Ellie Moss and I am Year 7 Lead. My role as a Year Lead involves me working with the Year 7 students to help them navigate their way through their first year at secondary school, both academically and socially. It is my job to lead and manage their achievement, progress and provide pastoral provision to my whole year group. As a school, we are able to provide this pastoral support through learning mental time and learning mental support. A learning mentor holds a key role in the life of a Year 7. They are the first member of staff that they see in the morning and make sure that they start off positively and with the right attitude. Learning mentors are the students' and parents' first point of contact and play a crucial role in the communication between parents and school. In my, year, in my role as Year Lead and for the Learning Mentors, it is vital that we challenge and aspire our students to achieve their very best, reinforce school ethos and ethics, and establish positive working relationships, something we pride ourselves on achieving at Chosen Hill School. This starts with the students becoming independent and organised, and the first thing this starts with is making sure that their equipment is sorted in the morning. This is checked regularly in the morning by the learning mentors, and as you can see on the slide, this is our top 10. This is what all of our students need to have a successful day at school. During learning mental time, we focus on giving the students a variety of activities in the morning to focus them and set the expectations for the day. They have an assembly once a week, led by myself, senior leadership team and other members of staff. We explore different local, national and global issues and the, the students learn lessons and we educate them in these assemblies. They participate in a numerous activity called Number Ninjas once a week. They also have a house or year group activity. This is, uh, we have added structured reading programme into our learning mentor programme. This is something new to the learning mentor programme with the aim to increase the li literacy of our students by exploring different texts and stories each term. Each learning mentor group will have a different book each term that they will read with their learning mentor. One of the most important things that we do is encourage our students to get involved in extracurricular activities as it is something that we feel increases self-esteem, confidence and allows our students to meet different students from different tutor groups but also different year groups. We have lots of opportunities for our students including sports clubs, books club, board game clubs, homework clubs, science clubs and many many more. I'm excited to also, also that we are planning a big school production and we are going to encourage as many of our students to get involved as we can. Something additional that we offer is year group and school council. Each tutor group will be given two, uh, two students who will represent their learning mental group at the year group council. Something that we encourage our students to get involved in with as much as they can. In all year groups, we have a house system. This allows our students to participate and represent their house in numerous activities. This includes house music, which has been a tradition at Chosen Hill for years, house drama, house bake-offs, house sports, house science competitions, and finishing the school with one of the best events, Sports Day. All our students can represent their house in a number of different things, get rewards and get prizes for doing so. You know which, which house you are in, depending on uh, your learning mental group. 
On the, uh, on the slides below, you can see the key details of contacting your learning mentors, uh, your child's learning mentor. Um, as you can, I know that lots of you have already used these contact details, but these are just a reminder for you to do that. Your, learn, your child's learning mentor is the first point of contact, but also as learning lead and head of year seven, my email address is always on there. We're always open for emails to make sure that we are supporting your, your, your children through anything that they need at secondary school. I'm now going to talk to you about a few key apps and information that you might need. The first thing that I'm going to talk to you about is Show My Homework. All students should now be set up with a Show My Homework account and all parents should now have been sent um, a parent pin. This was either done in the first few days of school or it was sent this week. For your child to log in, their username is at the bottom. It's 21 dot their initial dot their surname and their password is the password that they use at school. For parents to log in, they'll need their parent code or their PIN um, and then they will log in using the email address that is attached to school. This can be downloaded onto a phone, it can be um, logged in from a laptop or a computer or an iPad, but this is the most essential app that our students will need. The second app that I'm going to talk to you about is our school gateway. This is a system that we use to communicate all of our school communications through. It's, very, it's a free app that you can download and that's where you'll get key information from school. It enables you to pay for dinner money, it's where you pay for school trips and activities, um, it's also where you can top up um, using your debit or credit card for our cashless catering and our cashless school. You can see your child's timetables, their reports and also update any contact details that we might need. It's also, um, it will, you will also be able to see attendance and behaviour information on there as well. The Gateway app works in line with the Fusion app. The Fusion app is, uh, works with Aspins, who are, our co who are our catering company. There's lots of food and drink available in the canteen that I'm sure lots of your children have already experienced in the last couple of weeks. If your child does have special dietary requirements, please make sure you let us know that, so that we can help um, and let the catering company know. All of the lunch, um, lunch food can be ordered through the Fusion app. This links to Gateway and they work together. You top up on the school Gateway, but you order food through the Fusion app. Um, all students now have had their fingerprint taken or they um, will use a pin to get their food from the canteen. I'm now going to talk about parents' evening. Parents' evenings are booked on an online system. It's an, on, it's an online platform that we use that encourages you to book the, uh, the appointments online and then hopefully when, when the Year 7 Parents' Evening comes around, we will be able to welcome you onto the school site for this. Okay, B kit expectations. Uh, boys, you have uh, two kits. There's a green kit and a white kit. Green kit is worn for outdoor activities such as rugby and football. White kit is worn for activities such as badminton and basketball that are played inside. Boys, you need green, your green rugby shirt, black rugby shorts and your green um, rugby socks. Um, and when you are doing rugby and football, you will also need rugby or football boots. When you're inside, you will need to wear trainers. Girls, you have a white hooded sweatshirt with a school logo on it, um, a white polo shirt and a black skirt, and you have the options of wearing the black chosen heel leggings um, as, the, as, the, as the weather gets colder. You also just need to bring your trainers um, for the activities that we do. The activities that we do include netball, hockey, um, some football, um, gymnastics, dance um, and badminton. Hi, I'm Liz Hanwell, Assistant Head Teacher with Oversight for Teaching and Learning here at Chosen Hill School. I want to take this opportunity to talk to you about our growth mindset and our approach to learning in the classroom here at Chosen. We want all our students to believe that if they put in the effort, they will progress in all of their subjects in all of their classrooms. We want them to embrace the challenges that they will meet this year and to persevere. We want them to listen to our feedback and to move forwards and we also want them to celebrate the success of others. As teachers, we also talk to Year 7 about something called metacognition. This is how we learn. We want our students to be able to monitor their own progress, to think about how to improve, and to have the tools so that they are able to manage their learning independently. All of our teachers here at Chosen Hill talk to students about learning and how learning can be challenging. 
it's normal to not know something. It's normal to not be able to perform a new skill. And with practice, students need to believe that they will improve. We'll fail on this journey with our first attempts in learning, but that's normal. We like to tell our students they don't know this yet. And we encourage you as parents at home to also reinforce this. Finally, in classrooms, we want to introduce our students in year seven to a reading culture. Academic success is strongly linked to reading. Research by the Renaissance Learning found that the average reading age for a year 11 pupil is 13 years. But if with, with regular reading, they will make improvements. Also, reading, importantly, is crucial to our mental health. If we can lose ourselves in a book, if we can read about adventures or new people or new stories, we can enjoy that process. To support a reading culture, we have something called the Accelerated Reading Programme, which is delivered in our English lessons. Regular library lessons test students' reading ability and pick appropriate books to support them in their improvements in reading. We also have something called the Year 7 Learning Mental Reading Programme, where our learning mentors read to their groups twice a week. They introduce them to new books, new stories, new events, and they share the love of reading with, with their groups. We also have a vibrant library that hosts a World Book Day events and support our students in choosing the right book. We would encourage students, if they need that support, to visit the library and they will be able to be supported in their reading journey. Thank you. Hello, I'm Karen Kadira. I'm Assistant Head and Director of Sixth Form. I also work very closely with student support services and safeguarding within the school. Just want to talk very quickly to you about the idea that we have in the school of taking the mental well-being, the mental fitness, if you like, of students every bit as seriously as we take their physical fitness, their readiness to learn and the success that they're having in the curriculum. Because if a student is happy, is safe and feels that they have the support services available that they can turn to, we know they will be much more successful in their education. Coming in in year seven, being a little bit worried about things or external factors that might affect them, we would signpost them to the appropriate services and support either within the school or outside. And what you can see on the slide there is that we have a website um, link available with an awful lot of advice and guidance and also we have a lot of members of staff within school who can help to support your son or daughter as they travel through if things crop up that are worrying them. Within that student support services, we've got um, Mrs Maureen Sherman, or Mo, as she is known to most of us, um, who is the parent and child support. And she is, is very much there as a port of call for any issues perhaps external to the school, but also in terms of, as I say, that mental fitness of the, of the students as they go through to make sure that they are safe, happy and supported. Um, Ms Lisa Comer, who works in behaviour for learning support, is able to liaise with departments, talk to subject teachers and support students who perhaps for whatever reason aren't able to be in lessons for any period of time or just as a drop-in service to support them with their curriculum. We are very, very focused on every single student doing the best they can. And one of the key factors of that, as we are all aware, is actually the attendance is very, very important in terms of being in school every day that is possible. We understand that things can happen that make that difficult, but if 100% attendance is possible, then 100% attendance is going to have the most positive outcome for the students at the end of their key stages, at the end of GCSEs, and if they stay on into their A-levels. We do have quite a lot of data that the missed days of school have a significant impact, not just on the outcomes educationally, but also in the social embedding of skills, of growing as individuals, of taking part in extracurricular events, and so on. And we have a lot of factors that we would support attendance as we go through the year, and it is something that we will challenge if we feel that there is something we can put in to support. Punctuality as well, good habits, good learning habits, starts with being in school on time. We have a roll call situation in the morning. 
where students come in, they meet their learning mentors before they go into their classrooms to prepare for their day. And again, we're about developing very good habits and we will challenge students where we feel that we can improve aspects of attendance and punctuality. In terms of the attendance and the additional student support, I'd also like to just mention Ms Ros Chance, who is our attendance support officer. She's the one who will be picking up phone calls to report student absence. And Ms Helen Davis, who is our educational welfare officer, who would be picking up on attendance issues and will also come out of school to discuss other areas that we can offer that support. Hello, uh, I'm Winston Witham. I'm one of the assistant head teachers at Chosen Hill. And I'm going to talk to you around uh, how we track progress and report that to you. So firstly, just want to say a little bit about what sort of external tests the Year 7s will do. Um, in the next couple of weeks, they're going to be sitting their CAT tests. There is, these are a series of tests that they will do on the computers. And um, it tests various different uh, areas of their reasoning. It's not tests that you can revise for, but it gives us really, really good information around their verbal reasoning skills, their non-verbal reasoning skills, and their math skills and their spatial uh, reasoning as well. And we can use that to help um, plan in terms of lessons and also it helps us to set targets. But I'll talk a little bit about that later on. The Year 7s will also do a reading test and spelling test as well so that we will know what age they are at. And as part of the Accelerated Reader Programme, um, we will be able to monitor their reading age throughout the year and the progress that they're making. So in terms of how we set targets in Year 7, ordinarily we would use SATS results, uh, which were taken in Year 6, and then that is used to set targets for um, the end of Year 9, and those targets would again be used as they go forward to, to their GCSEs at the end of Year 11. And we would set aspirational um, challenging targets but achievable from those SATS scores and that is benchmarked nationally so that we know that those are, are um, good targets that we're setting for them. Um, however obviously the students they didn't take their SATS this year so we're going to use the CAT tests in order to do that which many many schools across the country are doing and we have a program that helps us do that. So their targets that you will see on their reports are set from the CAT test they will take and as, and as I said earlier there will be um, aspirational targets that we want them to try and reach. So you're going to get a series of uh, reports home throughout the year on how they are progressing. It's obviously really important that you know how your child is doing, what their attitude is like in lessons, the progress they're making and what they've got to do to um, improve. So the first report they will get home will focus purely on their attitude to learning and their attitude to homework and it will give you a key idea about how they're settling lessons and um, how responsive they are to what the teachers are asking them to do. So I just show you um, what students have got to do to show that exceptional attitude to learning. It's not just around being good and behaving well in lessons, it's their attitude towards how they improve. Are they meeting the expectations of the teachers? Are they, when they get their feedback, are they actioning it in order to improve? Um, are they showing that really, really positive growth mindset? And that's what they need to do in order to show that exceptional attitude to learning. And once we get those um, reports back from the teachers, we run something called our Go Green Assemblies. And for those students that are showing that good and e exceptional attitude across all of their subjects, we invite them to special assemblies where we sort of congratulate them with prize draws and we send out um, sort of you know thank yous to them to you so you know how well they are doing. So obviously we're going to promote that um, as we go through the year. To go back to their school report again, so you'll have on that first report information around their attitude to learning and homework, and you will see as we go into the second and third reports um, there will be those targets on there. Um, for where we want them to be and it will be for this cohort it will be end of year nine targets and then um, there will be a statement which says how well they are doing towards those targets the progress that they're making so they could be making above expected progress which which means that the teacher thinks if they carry on as they're working they're going to exceed their target grade um, it could be they're making expected progress so they're expected to be in line or they could be working towards it 
uh, and, in, and in some cases they may be below expected progress. But it's really important as parents that you know the progress they're making in each subject so that you can talk to those teachers and them um, as the year goes on. And on each of those reports after the first one there will be a key area of improvement. So um, something they really need to focus on in order to, to, to try and um, continue to do well or to make further progress. So you'll get over the course of the year four reports um, and in the last report where they do their end of year assessments they will be graded on there as well so you can see exactly how they've done in those end of year assessments. Hello, my name is Debbie Wardlaw, I'm the School Business Manager and I'd like to talk to you about some of the ways you can become involved in life at Chosen Hill School. We have an active Parents and Teachers Association who raise funds for extra student facilities such as football goals and benches for the playground. We have held quiz nights and raffles in the past and we're open to any other ideas you may have to raise funds and have fun doing so. We welcome new members and you can get in touch either through the school website or by contacting me in school directly. Over the next few weeks we will also be looking for new parent governors to join our governing body. This is a great opportunity to contribute to the leadership and direction of the school and if you would like to discuss this further please do get in touch. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for the Year 7 Information Evening. I'm very much looking forward to working with all the Year 7s over the, current, over the coming year. I look forward to helping them achieve their very best both academically and socially. I'm going to leave you now with some photos of the first couple of weeks of the Year 7s and I'm very much looking forward to meeting you all in person. Very